Greetings and welcome. It's Dan McElroy here. Thank you for your interest in the Java programming class I'm teaching. This class is totally online and it's offered in 14 weeks as a late start class. There are no on-campus meetings and there is only one required Zoom meeting. If you have already taken an online class from me, you only need to look at this information once. There are a few important things I want to discuss before the class starts. What the class covers, who should take the class, and just as important, who should not take the class. The workload, information about me and why I teach, accessing the course on Canvas, course prerequisites, computer and software requirements. My most important goals in this class are for you to be prepared to succeed in future classes here or at a university and to succeed as a programmer. This class provides an introduction to the Java programming language. This class does not cover JavaScript, which is a different programming language most often embedded into the code for a web page. We start with data types, control structures such as the if and else if, and case statements for and while loops and how they work. After the basics, you will learn how to use Java methods, sometimes referred to as functions or subroutines, arrays, character and string manipulation, references, accessing disk files, bit manipulation, and introduction to object-oriented programming, and creating applications using a graphical user interface, also known as GUI. Or GUI. This is the class that you should take and it will benefit you greatly if you plan to transfer to a university computer science or computer engineering program or will be working as a programmer with Java. By completing this class and learning the information covered, you will be prepared to succeed. This is the class that you should take if you want to know more about Java. This is the class that you want to take if you want to learn a new language to advance your career. This is the class you want to take if you want to know how programmers solve problems. Who should not take this class? I also realize that most of the people in this world have absolutely no desire to know the intricate details of programming. They just want to turn on the computer, select an application, and have it work. Some of the smartest people I know have absolutely no desire to become programmers. Good for them. Good for me and good for you. Not everyone in the world needs to be a programmer. There are many other important occupations. One time, an athlete needed three more units to qualify for a team. That would have been fine when I was teaching the CIS 041 introduction to CIS, but he ended up in my programming course. He contacted me after the first day and said, I am in the wrong class. Can you help me out? I was able to get him transferred into an appropriate class. If you find that you are in the wrong class, don't walk away. Run and do it before the drop date. The CIS 41 Introduction to CIS course is not a programming class. I think of it as being similar to driver's ed. You learn the rules of the road, the different controls on a car, and how to work them to successfully drive down the road. You don't need to know whether you have a carburetor or fuel injection, the type of refrigerant for the air conditioner or the coolant in the radiator. You don't need to know whether the voltage regulator is built into the alternator or is a separate device. You just want to drive. This class, CIS 84, Java Programming, is definitely a programming class. To be successful here, you already need to know how to use a computer and a word processor, knowing the basics of using a spreadsheet application such as Excel, Numbers, or Calc is important. You need to know how to work your way around files and folders, use a web browser, and download files from the Internet. These are some of the things that are taught in the CIS 041 Intro to CIS course. In a programming class, you not only learn how things work, but learn how to customize things and create programs from scratch. Title V of the Education Code defines three hours per week for each unit in a semester-length class. 
a three unit class should then be 10 hours each week in a 14 week class, which includes lecture, homework, reading assignments, lab assignments with lab reports, and class discussion. The class is organized into 14 modules and presented one module per week for a late start semester class, which means plan on spending about 10 hours each week. You may get by with fewer hours some weeks or maybe a little more for other weeks. If you already have a background in programming, you may be able to spend less time. I know there's a lot of work, but I want you fully prepared to succeed in future programming classes either here or at a university. I never would have made it through college without a few easy classes to balance out the more difficult ones. Unfortunately, this is one of the classes with a lot of work, not only for you, but for me too. Try to spread it out over the week instead of rushing things and trying to do a full week's work in one day. I realize that people have other things in their lives besides this class. Try to plan your coursework so that it fits into your life. If you have vacation plans or your schedule is full with other important obligations, you may want to consider enrolling in the course another time. The last thing I want is to discourage anyone from taking the class, but I want you to be able to successfully complete the class. I will make myself available to help if you are having a difficult time understanding something or a problem with a programming project. You have my personal support. This is a promise about me. Although I took a few programming classes in college, my degree is in electronic engineering technology. I spent several years designing various pieces of hardware for computer systems. One day they needed programmers when the hardware design was completed. Then I became a software engineer instead of a hardware engineer. Most of my early projects were done in assembly language on several different types of computers. Other projects were done in high-level languages such as PL1, Pascal, C, C++, Java, Fortran, and a little Swift. I have been on projects with over 100 programmers, some with only three programmers, and other projects where I was the only programmer. I've networked multiple computers, controlled lasers, worked on automotive test equipment, medical equipment, video games, written hardware, diagnostics, device drivers, and more. I programmed multi-million dollar systems where the computer took up a whole floor and microcontrollers smaller than a fingernail priced at only a few dollars. When the opportunity came to be a teacher, I jumped at the chance to share my passion and experience. I want to share that enthusiasm with you. Once you are registered and the class has started, you gain access to the course material on Canvas. You need to use a computer with internet to access and complete and submit assignments. You can start doing lab projects using only a web browser that connects to an online compiler. I'm recommending OnlineGDB.com as the online compiler. However, you will need a computer on which you can install a Java development system to complete the window-based graphical user interface GUI projects. Alternate projects will be assigned if you're not able to obtain a computer in which you are able to install the Java development compiler. In closing, stay healthy, stay active, don't forget about the other side of your brain. Take an art class or music or PE, get involved in your community, be more than just a programmer. Once again, a great big welcome to the class. I really enjoy programming and I enjoy teaching. I look forward to working with you during the class and hope it will not only be enjoyable, but educational and intellectually challenging. You can reach me at dan.mcelroy at sjcc.edu. Bye for now.